Uh, it is certainly an honor and a privilege to join all of you. And I'm very excited about sharing what we've been able to accomplish here at the world's busiest airport. I'm gonna walk us very quickly through this. I definitely wanna leave time for any uh, questions, Mike, that you might facilitate. So what I'd like to start off is kind of give everyone just a profile of the world's busiest airport, talk a little bit about AATC so you'll know who we are, the why behind ISO 55001, the keys to success as we mark them, and some golden nuggets for everyone to take away. So Mike, if you wouldn't mind, thank you so much. And you can go ahead and click through this. So Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport, the economic effect that we have is 448,000 jobs. We are the largest employment center in Georgia. 4.2 billion of the money that is generated here is total annual payroll. And if you think about how that converts into a direct or indirect economic impact is 6.6 billion. So whenever we talk about the world's busiest airport, whenever I get the privilege of talking about the world's busiest airport, I love touting off these numbers, 4.2 billion, 6.6 billion, because I get to use that word billion and being a little country boy from Alabama, it was hard pressed for me to even understand what $100,000 were, less, less, I mean, a million, you're really blowing my brain, but now I get to talk about billions. Um, so I love this whole thing, show me the money when it comes to our world's busiest airport. Next slide, Mike. So if you look at the profile of this airport, 100 million plus passengers, pre-COVID, obviously. Uh, we were doing 300,000 passengers a day, uh, 21 consecutive years of being the world's busiest airport, and you, 2,500 plus flights uh, per day, uh, 16 consecutive years being the most efficient airport, and you all may know this or may not, but 150 plus U.S. cities, uh, we can reach within two hours, 70 plus international cities, I'm sorry, 150 plus U.S. cities that we can uh, reach a direct flight, and 70 plus international cities that we can reach as a direct flight. And then 80% of the U.S. population in 12 major cities we can reach within a two-hour flight. So let's talk a little bit about the Atlanta Airlines Terminal Corporation. So when you think about AATC, we were chartered and formed back in 1979. The airlines and the city at the time were very forward thinking in the construction of Atlanta Airlines Terminal Corporation. Then now we're Atlanta Airlines Terminal Company. And the whole premise was to create an organization that could maintain all of the building operations, facility maintenance on behalf of our carriers, since they are the ones burdened with the upkeep of this 7.2 million square feet. Uh, again, uh, 94 full-time employees, um, but we have about um, 1,200 contract employees under us. Uh, that's across 47 contracts. So when you think about this organization, it's a relatively small organization under 100 full-time employees. Yes, we do have about 1,200 contract employees under us, but we're a pretty small company managing the world's busiest airport, spanning across the 7.2 million square feet, somewhere around $170 million of annual operating and capital improvement budget. So this little bitty company of 94 employees, since I've been here in 2010, we've done to the tomb of somewhere close to $650 million worth of capital improvement projects here at the airport. So why ISO 55001? And there's a plethora of reasons why we embarked on this journey back in 2016 and then reinvigorated ourselves in 2017 to get the certification in 2018. But these reasons are reduce operating costs, extend the useful life and value of assets, enhance the reliability and performance of those assets, improve awareness and response to risk, fewer disruptions and more rapid recoveries, organizational alignment of business goals and objectives and consistent decision-making with approved communication throughout the organization. And let me just say one thing very quickly in, in reference to these reasons and all of you who are watching, who are either on some pursuit of ISO certification or are considering the pursuit of ISO certification, 
we were very fortunate to do this in 2000, start a journey 2016, reinvigorated 2017, certified in 2018, because we were able to implement all of the key learnings and lessons of the standardizing how we make decisions and how we lead this organization, we were in a much better position to get sucker punched by COVID-19 in 2020. Understanding that we were already looking at all of our risks, going through our pestle, going through our SWOT analysis, and making that a part of our culture, when we got hit as a global community with COVID-19, AATC, because of ISO, and the journey that we did with 55001, we were able to respond very quickly as opposed to having to get hit with um, COVID-19 and figure out what to do. So these were benefits uh, and reasons that I had listed on the journey of ISO before we got hit with a global pandemic. So that is another reason why ISO is so beneficial to organizations and companies because it prepares you for the unknown. Next slide, Mike, thank you. So my main reason, this is what I love. My main reason for ISO 55001 is to take care of our people. So what do I mean by taking care of our people? Safety, tools, and empowerment. So all of us here that are on this webinar, those leaders, all of us who are leaders, we understand that people are our most valuable asset. And we have to do our best as leaders to ensure that our people are taken care of. Because if our people are taken care of, then your customers, your clients, in my instance, my passengers will be taken care of. If my people are taken care of, my shareholders will be taken care of. If my people are taken care of, then the stakeholders, the city of Atlanta, the mayor, the city council, the department of aviation, all of our contra um, contract partners, they will all be taken care of, but it's people first. So when we think about taking care of our people, we got to make sure that our people are safe, obviously, taking care of their physical safety. And then, of course, during COVID, taking care of their financial safety. Give them the tools to be productive. Give them the tools to be successful and then empower them. This is what ISO does. If you institute and implement an ISO certification in our I-55001, then we are able to protect our people, we're able to give them the tools to be successful, and we're able to empower them to make better decisions based off of evidence-based uh, evidence management. Well, you create a better work life. You then create happier people. And then for our shareholders and our stakeholders, what comes out of that, Mike, the next um, point, increased productivity, which leads to everything that companies want. Increased value. Mike, if you hit the next one for me, increased shareholder value. So ISO sets you up to do that fundamental foundational, foundational component that all of us as leaders should be thinking about, which is how do we take care of our people? How do we get, create a better life for them? How do we make them happier? Because if you create a better life, work life, balance, all of that, if they're happier, then they're going to increase their productivity. They're also going to increase their loyalty to you too, which is a great byproduct. If their productivity increases, obviously that leads to increased shareholder value. Mike, thank you. So our focus, our first focus in 2000. Um, uh, 17 and then where we got certified in 2018, uh, our certificate was on our utility plants. So when you think about our central utility plants here at Hartsville Jackson, uh, these plants um, basically power a city. So we like to look at ourselves as a big airport, but a little city. If you think about our cooling capacity, 23,000 tons of cooling, that's enough to cool 10,000 homes. Right behind that, when you think about the steam generation that we have here on campus, 115,000 pounds per hour, that's enough steam to, um, uh, to put, that's enough steam to power your largest steam locomotives. When we think about 
the electricity, 280 million kilowatts. That's enough power generated here at Hartsville Jackson to power 25,000 homes. And then water, our last major utility, 325 million gallons that we produce here, which is enough to um, uh, supply 33,000 homes. So this is the reason why we look at ourselves as a small city. And you can imagine the utility plants are the heartbeat of this airport. So moving 2,500 planes a day, landing and departing, moving 300,000 passengers through this airport a day, close to 110 million passengers in 2019, we have to make sure that these utility plants do not stop. We have to make sure that they're working in the most efficient, effective manner, because if they stop, operations can stop. So the benefits of ISO 55001, um, you can keep going, Mike, thank you. Scroll on down. Was it worth the effort? Was it worth the effort? Global recognition of excellence, uh, better fulfillment of fiduciary responsibilities to our shareholders. And this is important. So when all of you, and I'm gonna get to some of the challenges uh, and go to nuggets, but when, when you're thinking about moving forward, with ISO, how do you do that? If, you're, if you report to somebody, your boss or a board of directors, in my instance, you have to be able to articulate and communicate what is the benefit for them to invest in this effort. Because it's not just a financial uh, investment that takes for the certification, some of the training, that's really small. That's almost marginal. The real investment is the investment of the president and the CEO and all of my vice presidents that are engaged in this and the entire company that is engaged in it. And then you suck in all of our business partners. Now that number of certification, that's my new, but now all of the dollars associated with all of those salaries and the opportunity costs and the time, that's a huge investment. So you have to be able to articulate the benefit better fulfillment of fiduciary responsibilities to your shareholders, increase shareholder value. And that's what I showed you prior. You take care of your people, more productive, happier, increase shareholder value. Proof of commitment to the world, uh, um, I'm sorry, proof of commitment to world-class service. So for all of our stakeholders, the city of Atlanta, the mayor, her cabinet, the city council, department of aviation, all of the different stakeholders, TSA, CBP, that touch this airport, us going on the journey, communicated how serious we are about serving this airport in a world-class manner. Assurance of superior asset management system, obviously. Awareness and implementation of best practices, documented processes and procedures. Documented processes and procedures. And I'm sure that many of you like us uh, there's a huge void and a gap that can sometimes be found in the documented, uh, documented processes and procedures because we're so busy running and trying to make things happen that we do not spend the appropriate time of standardizing our operating procedures and then documenting them and making sure that they are seamless and transferable no matter who comes into your organization. Positive culture shift a positive culture shift. So since doing this, and I have to give kudos to my vice president of facilities, Mr. Gary Merrill, who is the subject matter expert uh, when it comes to ISO, and along with uh, the wonderful ladies that um, have helped us build out this program, those are the ones that ran it for me. Um, Donna and Jennifer and so many other names, uh, Mar Marshall and uh, Tracy, they're amazing. And when you have people that are so committed to helping you put forward something that they know will change the culture, it becomes infectious. So you actually have, as a president or a CEO or a leader in whatever capacity that you are in, you actually have consigliaries for you now helping to elevate your culture and elevate the positive nature that exists throughout your culture by having individuals engage in this journey that are within your organization, which is very key. Next slide, Mike. So keys to success. 
leadership I just mentioned, I have to give a, a huge uh, kudo and appreciation to my vice president, Mr. Gary Merrill, um, who helped keep all of this together on the journey. But my other vice presidents, uh, Steve, Steve Masico and uh, Linda Dean, their commitment from a leadership standpoint filtrates all the way down to the organization. So we all know it must start at the top and it must filter down through the bottom. These three individuals, these three vice presidents were always uh, available. They were pushing to make sure throughout the entire organization, through all three of their divisions, that the ISO culture was penetrating throughout the organization. And for me, as the head coach of the organization, having some amazing coordinators with you that believe in increasing the culture and making the culture more positive, standardizing your practices, increasing shareholder value, having people on your team at the leadership level is um, critical. And I can't emphasize that enough. It is critical. A process like this must be led top down, but supported bottom up. So you have to be able to get the buy-in of your organization. And you can only do that through having great leadership. And I'm very blessed that I have two, three phenomenal leaders that have been with me on this journey. One of which, Rod Ozus, if you're watching, uh, he retired and he was very instrumental in getting this up and started for us as well. Sell and educate your external stakeholders, big deal. Uh, sell and educate your internal stakeholders. Surround yourself with the best people. That's basically what I just articulated to you. The leadership that I'm blessed to work with, I'm surrounded by incredible people, those who are a lot smarter than myself. And because they are phenomenal leaders, the organization oh, follows yeah. them. Uh, um, provide resources and stick to those who lead the effort. I'm um, sorry, provide resources and a stick to those who lead the effort. And what I mean by that is, again, remember, it must come from top down, the support and the commitment to what you're doing, but it must be led from the bottom up. And those uh, ladies that I mentioned to you earlier, we had to empower them and we had to give them the stick to make sure they could get everybody else on board. So it wasn't just enough to say, hey, you're gonna go lead this, and then you throw them out there to the wolves and they have no power or influence behind them. You need to make sure that you empower those, in my instance, letting the organization know that these ladies who are leading this effort has the full support of the president and CEO. So when they set a meeting, you need to attend the meeting. That's what we mean about giving, providing the resources, any training that they need, any financial support that they need, resources, but giving them the stick is the power to help move the organization. Lead from the top and power from below and be disciplined, be disciplined. And I think of discipline, not discipline meaning go and brush your teeth every morning. I think about discipline as Jim Collins outlaws this fanatical discipline, meaning no matter what may happen, during your time of pushing and implementing ISO, you do not get deterred. You do not get distracted. You make sure you understand the reason why you're doing it and do not let anyone sway you off of that why. Next slide, Mike. All right, we are almost done. So looking at the golden nuggets and the key takeaways, the insights, um, Champion, you need a champion, you need a team, and you need to provide the resources in order for this to be successful. Champion needs to be the person, whoever may be the highest within your organization or your division or department, that is the person that has to be a champion. That is the person that has to step out, send emails, participate, be available, so that the organization understands that there's commitment there. Then you have to have a team. And again, I was very fortunate. I had a very cohesive uh, and well put together team. So I didn't have to do, I didn't have to do a lot. Yes, there was an investment of my time, certainly, but I didn't have to be the one doing. I had an amazing team that was making sure everything got done. 
and then you have to provide them the resources. Challenge, as I mentioned, time commitment. Uh, time commitment is huge because remember, I said it's all of these bodies, executives, vice presidents, CEO, then you have your staff, but then you have all of your business partners. That's a lot of coordination of people calendars. There's a lot of time putting together your asset management system. Um, there's a lot of time creating and making sure your documents are right. So there's a huge time commitment uh, that is involved. So that is challenging. And then obviously capturing buy-in. And I've kind of already listed out how you do that, how you capture the buy-in of the, your organization. The good, document and tribal knowledge, obviously, right? Companies roll through people, be it five years, 10 years, we're always circling out um, um, those that are more senior, those who have been here a long time, they go off and they retire. You don't wanna lose all that information. You have new people coming in. So ISO is a way of documenting and capturing all of that tribal knowledge that it continues to be passed down through your organization without running the risk of someone retiring and taking all that knowledge with them. And then obviously there's a huge culture shift. Um, make your people happy, they become more productive, you increase shareholder value, right? All right, so if I was in your shoes, which I was, and which I am. Uh, spend your time at the beginning of the journey, educating, educating, educating the entire team about ISO 55000 uh, in our case. It's general principles, the main goal of what you wanna accomplish, i.e. the strategic plans, the purpose and the value of each, um, and then the benefits of all the various processes. That's important. That's very, very important in order to check off that one bullet on the challenge, capturing buy-in. You do that by spending the time up front, educating people on why are we doing this? Why are we gonna commit all of our time to this? What is the benefit? And there's always that, what is in it for me? This is how you arrest that, is uh, communicating what ISO 55000 is, talking about the general principles and then letting everybody know what the main goal is, but making that personal to each one of them so they understand the benefits and how it will impact them. Make the teams aware of the significant time commitment, right? So you don't wanna surprise everybody. You wanna let them know upfront that it's gonna be a lot of time that we're gonna spend towards this, but you're already providing them with the why. So if you do it upfront, People are not surprised, nor are they frustrated, and nor do you lose them during the process. So communicate that up front. And then obviously, as I've reiterated several times, you want to ensure that you allocate the resources um, to the various groups of people that are involved in this journey. 